Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this tutorial, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about organizing a mix session and setting yourself up for success before you actually get started mixing. And I really like to treat my mixes, generally speaking, as a separate stage of the whole production process. I will almost always render them out as audio, um, although I do keep it in time to the grid. Because one, that's how you're going to get a lot of client sessions. And two, it kind of gives you a different perspective on working with it. Working with audio and working with MIDI definitely have a different feel to them. And if I need to, I can always go in and grab the virtual instruments from the original source session if I've got a major issue to get past. But the whole purpose here is really so we can focus on what to do creatively and technically from a mix improvement kind of perspective, rather than how do we do it and getting stuck and sidetracked and setting up all kinds of stuff once we're knee deep in the process. And so a couple things we want to do is we want to look at the mix from the perspective of what style is it? What are some things that are typical in that style? Are we going to need specific groups? Are we going to need parallel or side chain compression on the mix? Are we going to need filter sweeps or particular you know, stylistic elements? So we can go ahead and build that into our, our template as we go. We also want to look at how complex is the mix? How are we going to organize and layer this? Really organizing the tracks and having a game plan for working with them gets you so far along the way towards an easy, fluid, creative mix that I can't stress it enough. So I've got this basic very simple thing I threw together. It's just an excerpt from a track I'm working on. And I've laid in a bunch of parts, but I've organized them by type. And you'll see if I open these all up. So I've got a section that's just some basic, very simple drums. And then I've got a separate section that's noise percussion. And that's obviously a very much a rhythmic percussive thing, but because it's got a different timbre and it's got a different kind of general vibe to it, I wanted to keep it sorted separately from the drums. They work together very nicely, but I wanted to be able to balance and play those off against each other, not only individually, but as groups. I mean, so here they are together. So there's definitely some room to mess with those and explore you know, the relationships between the two of them even though they're both still rhythmic elements in the track. And that's, that's a good way of thinking about organizing it. What are the roles of the parts that you have and how are you going to put them together? It might be something that you want to focus on things with say fast transients and big attack, or you might want to focus on things that are long and sustained, or you might want to look at things in terms of like more like melodies and rhythms and harmonies. There's different ways of approaching this and it really depends on the kind of track you're working with. So this next group is what I'm calling pad layers, and it includes you know, a whole bunch of different sustained long held notes and kind of pad like devices. I've got this very classic pad, and then I've got a choir over top of it. And then I've also got this electric piano in the mix. And even though it's not playing really long held out things, it's still kind of a sustaining ringing tone. There's not a lot of huge melodic stuff going on. So I felt that layer wise, it probably fit best with the pads. If we hear all three of those together, we get a sense of that, that background basis for the track. So again, I'm looking at more the role of it rather than specifically what part is it. It's only one way to approach it, but it's a system of organizing it so you can think about it differently. Next, I've got a couple of layered things. I've got this, this arpeggiator layer, which just starts out with a basic pluck. And then I've got two different layers of synths underneath it. And those are all just organized, again, in a group. Actually, it's a track stack, it's a summing stack, but I want to treat those both potentially together as an element of the mix, and then I'll mess with them and balance them internally against each other and change that over the course of the mix. And then I've got a similar thing happening with the bass here. I've got a main bass part. And then we come over here and we start adding in some additional parts. So more of a tubey kind of bass. And I've got definitely more of a resonant thing going on. So a bunch of different layers. Again, we can see here these particular are playing the same part, but I'll be able to mix those against each other. But they're all still bass, so I've got them sorted together. And I've just got some basic sweeps. And then I've got a folder track, not a summing stack, which is my mix effects. But I've gone ahead and I've set up 
a hall reverb, a plate reverb, and then I might change this, but for now it's an eighth note delay and a dotted sixteenth note delay. And as far as the routing goes, having this in different groups goes a long way because we can balance groups against each other and then we can tweak the things individually inside of the groups. Whether you want to work with things like VCAs or just work with, say, region automation or just track automation, you know, you have a lot of flexibility between the elements of this track as well as the individual parts. We want to have some good metering set up. Now, I'm just using some stock stuff here, so there's not a lot. I'm just using the Logic Multimeter. And so we've got a basic frequency analyzer, and we've got a goniometer, which is also a phase meter. And so we can see right now there's not a lot happening as far as space left and right, so I'll probably have to develop that in the mix. But it gives me some metering, and I've got some nice some levels here measuring luffs, which is loudness. And we can use that to look at actual loudness as well as, you know, peak signal strength, etc. So anyway, I've got some basic routing set up, but I've gone ahead and, and pre-planned that. And to be perfectly honest, and so I've got some basic routing set up, but it's a pretty logical routing. And as I get deeper into it, I might say pull in from my library a, a sidechain control or something like that. But for right now, given this track, I don't necessarily think I need it. But one of the most important things I think going into a mix is you want to make sure you have a plan and getting that plan together before you, you know, actually start dialing things in really can help you organize your thought process. And so that's like thinking maybe I'm going to approach this from the kick and I'm going to build everything off of the kick and I'm going to focus first on the rhythmic stuff and then I'm going to bring in maybe my pads and then I'll work at, you know, some panning and some spatial dimension stuff and open it up. You don't have to stick to it religiously, but having a couple of first steps to get you moving through it and getting things laid out clean goes a long way towards letting you hear new possibilities and kind of keeping you motivated and inspired as you're going. The last couple of things I wanted to talk about as far as setting up your mix. Uh, one, I want to go back to optimizing the session, especially if you're generally working a lot with, you know, with MIDI or you're doing a lot of recording in your sessions. It's really a good idea, like I had said, to convert things to say audio, but even if you're not going to do that, you know, at least create a new clean session. Save a copy of the session, get rid of all the extra takes, all the extra junk that's in there, um, get rid of unused tracks, things that didn't quite make the mix. One, if you want to share the session with somebody later, you've got a clean copy without all the extra stuff, but two, it's just a lot of overhead, and depending whether you're in a particular DAW, some of that might or might not affect the system resources. And we also probably want to go in and look at our audio buffer size. So if we come up here in Logic, it's going to be under Preferences Audio, and we're just going to set this to as high as we can get it because this is going to allocate more memory to our plugins for mixing. And when we're tracking, we want to go very low to sample buffer for very low latency, etc. But when we're mixing, we might as well just, just bring it all the way up. The fewer of the virtual instruments, especially things that are, you know, maybe passing audio, multi timbral instruments, they might be really sucking up some resources. So working with one, a higher buffer, and two, converting those to audio can really, you know, buy you some, some you know, processing headroom, as it were. And then last, I want to look at Organizing your arrangement. There's a couple of tricks we can use. This one's fairly self-explanatory. There's not a ton of sections here, but one thing we can do is maybe come in and chop up some of these tracks, being smart on the grid. Actually, let me select everybody. And because we are in smart mode and to the grid, it's a pretty simple process to come through and maybe slice things up to be able to arrange them and, and rework them. And this will also let you maybe come in and say select a region and add a particular marker, for example, that you might want to come back and look at. When you're listening, drop a marker in there, you know, drums too loud or something like that. You can also use this and use your markers list to just kind of loop a certain section and work on a certain section, whether it's a build up or a drop or a breakdown. Markers just can be a really convenient way of navigating through parts of your session. But certainly also coming in and chopping things up, especially if you're on the grid and maybe even you know creating folders can be kind of useful especially when we get into things like working with region automation specifically or track automation etc and then lastly i just wanted to really emphasize i mean you can't emphasize enough i think having some good notes and some record keeping in there just as you work through the session can be a godsend later if you have some ideas and you don't want to sidetrack yourself right now if it doesn't directly affect what you're working on make a note of it and especially in something like logic we just come in, we have basic project notes, so we can come in here and we also can go per track and say, um, add delay on build up, or come over here to the project and make notes of things that you want to attend to next session, you know.
And so you can just have a basic to-do list and you can keep working through the process. And then as that becomes a logical part of it, you're like, oh yeah, it's right there. And so if you have a DAW that doesn't necessarily have a great notes function, for years I worked in Pro Tools, which does not, and I just kept text edit files, you know, .txt files in there in every session. And it became quite an easy habit to get into. Something like Logic, where you have a notes function right there, really, really makes it simple for you. Particularly in Logic, Command Option P will hide that for you or show it to you. So there you go, a couple of quick ways to think about your mix before you start mixing. And being able to come through here, set yourself up for success, use some templates, set up some basic metering, set up some routing that's logical, and organize your tracks in a way that makes sense. If you do that and you have a good plan and take some notes, I think you'll find yourself very much farther down the creative road without a lot of the technical headaches that we sometimes run into. So I hope you got something good out of this and find some new ways to improve your own mixes. In my next couple of tutorials, we'll look at some basic mixing workflows and some mixing concepts of mixing for the song. I'm Stephen Ellis, Def for ADSR. So thanks for checking out the video and make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel. Take care.